hello and welcome to this edition of Big Fish Small Pod. I'm your host, Daniel, and joining me, we have from Five Reason Sports, a good friend of the program. We have Mr. Kevin Miller. Kevin, it is great to have you on. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me, Danny. I'm super excited to get to talk a little bit of Marlins baseball with you. Yeah, as we're as we're you're actually the, the last guest for our, our five part series, saving the the best for last in terms of talking to <laughs> members of the media, fans, whatnot, trying to get their uh, opinion on it. And I want to get first off your opinion, um, first off this Marlins off season, no major league signings, uh, a lot of trade, a lot of rumors in the trade uh, rumor mill there, lots of front office looks like signings. But what has been your your overall outlook? maybe on, on this off season for the fish. It's, it's definitely been an interesting one. Um, and I mean, I, I think fans of baseball just in general can say that it's been a really slow moving off season so far. Uh, and then, you know, when you, you know, use a magnifying glass and look at the Marlins off season specifically, you see how slow it really has been. Like you said, no major league signing so far. Um, but I like the moves that they're making so far. Uh, definitely the front office moves bring Bendix in. It's awesome. Um, I know so far people have some, polarizing opinions on him and, you know, how slow he's been and, 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 you know, bringing a whole bunch of like project over from the race, if you want to call it that. But I like how he's building up the front office little by little uh, kind of baby steps. You know, I mean, this is a big, big transition. I know that that word gets thrown around a lot this year, but really is a big transition bringing in a new face of the organization. And I think you got to start building those building blocks. And then later on, you can start really bringing in names and players and you got to set a foundation. Um, But so far I like it. And I'm excited to see what the players he's brought in so far, what they can bring to the table. Yeah, we, we've seen a lot from Peter. It seems like a lot of smaller trades and a lot of players that come from that Rays organization. Uh, Christian Bethencourt, Calvin Faulkner, Vidal Bruhan all look to have some type of major role or, or at least some sort of role with the Marlins. And you look at his uh, front office, getting Gabe Kapler, who used to be a Tampa Bay Ray yeah. back in his playing days. Um, but what have you seen from maybe the, the signings um, that he did in the front office. You look at Gabe Kapler, Rachel Blackovich, uh, getting a uh, player development role. A lot of players, a lot of former players there, a lot of um, front office signings for for Peter. Yeah, so really the the one that stands out to me the most is definitely the Gabe Kapler hiring. Um, I, you know, I wasn't the biggest fan of his when he was in San Francisco, but something that you just can't ignore was that 2021 season that he led the Giants with, you know I mean? Franchise record, 107 wins. No one saw that coming. You know, they won the NL West for the first time. I mean, they were the only team in the past 11 years to beat the Dodgers in winning the NL West. Um, so I think that's a, an awesome, awesome hiring. Uh, you know, he's a big analytics guy, which this is – that's the direction the organization seems to be headed in, is more analytic-based. And, and I mean, if you really want to call it that, the nerds of baseball, which is kind of different. You know, we haven't really had that in Miami. So I, I like – to me – Obviously, the Rachel hiring is is a more recent thing. I don't know too much about her, so I, I won't get into her too much. But I've only heard positive things about her, which is awesome to hear. Um, but really, the Gabe Kapler one, when it happened, one, it caught me way off guard. And two, I was like, the more I started thinking about it, I was like, OK, this is really, really interesting. This is really unique. And I, I really like the direction they're taking things in. Yeah, uh, really great signing there with, with Gabe Kapler. See what he could bring uh, to the front office role, having just come off the manager role with the Giants and, and a little more on the field with the fish just what have you seen from them retooling it's a lot of guys keeping the same um you have Josh Bell opting in you're going to have Luis Arias you're going to have a lot of these offensive guys full season we mentioned Josh Bell Jake Berger going to get a full season of him well, what players are, are you looking at maybe offensively just for the Marlins seeing how they shape up in 24 so I, I love that you mentioned that we're getting a full season of Berger and Bell. I think that's something that a lot of people don't think about when they look at this team moving forward. You know, obviously the big thing is everyone wants to react to, oh, we don't have Jorge Soler back. Well, first of all, he's not entirely gone. I mean, it's not looking great, but who knows what happens there. But let's say Jorge Soler does leave and he we don't have him back. We're still looking at a lineup that has Jake Berger and Josh Bell right from day one. And you're hoping for the full season, you know, stay healthy and, Obviously, no, Berger's not going anywhere. But Bell, you know, you hope you don't trade him. You don't have to trade him at the deadline. Um, so I think the offense is actually going to be better, at least from the get-go, than it definitely was last year, uh, having those two guys right off the bat. 
Jake Berger who swings and he hits a fly ball in the air. Left field going back. Blank and hard looking up. It's gone. Berger in two at bats this afternoon. He's gone deep twice. Like you said, pretty much the lineup for the most part is going to stay the exact same from the second half, just minus Solaire. Uh, but one guy I, I really am circling, I want to keep my eye on is uh, Brian De La Cruz. And I feel like that's someone that a lot of people have have said, you know, the past year, two years, that they're like, you know, we're waiting for him to take the next step. And, you know, last year was a step in the right direction. Um, you know, he played a lot more than he has played up to this point in his career. Uh, I think a career high in 19 homers, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, I, I just – I want to see him be more consistent because we know how when he's hot, he's one of the hottest hitters I've seen ever. I mean, right. he, he'll have a week or two weeks straight where he's literally having three hit games, four hit games, you know, a couple homers here and there, doubles left and right. And it's like – but then, you know, on the flip side, you go two, three weeks and he's ice cold. So I want to see him, you know, grow – and mature as a hitter and kind of be a little bit more consistent, a little more balanced. Um, because I think if we could get him to really tap into the potential that I think a lot of people see in him, he he would be a huge piece for this lineup moving forward. And if you do lose Solaire, I think him, you know, taking that next step would kind of make you not worry so much about not having Solaire. Yeah. And it also seems like they're kind of banking on Avi to be healthy for a full yep. year. It seems like they want him because a fully healthy Avi it's 15, 20 home runs. A guy you can really depend on. Defense is not bad at all. And it seems like they're kind of banking on that, on Abby to be that somewhat starting outfield for them and hopefully go a full season. Because if not, yeah. it'd be looking even worse than currently what they've had with uh, Abby the last couple of years. The, the pitching, what have you seen from the pitching? Uh, it seems like a lot of question marks. Um, Eddie... Trevor Rogers, Max Meyer, a lot of guys coming off injury, rocky seasons. And then you always have the implication of almost is Luzardo going to be traded? Do we know if he's right. going to be opening day? But what have you seen this pitching side? Is there a way the Marlins can can reshape it at all, add a piece or even trade someone like Luzardo? So the way I feel about that, I I it's so touchy to talk about the pitching because obviously you know we have a lot of pitching and and you got to trade from your strength and pitching to get some bats I understand that uh in this year where you know Sandy's going to be out for the full year I don't see a world where trading Lazardo makes a ton of sense I understand the flip side where you know he would definitely bring in probably the biggest package of of all the pitchers that they have to trade but in this year in 2024 Jesus Lazardo is your ace I don't think there's a question about that um so to me, I don't see that being a realistic option. You know, all the other names, Eddie, Braxton Garrett, uh, Trevor Rogers, like you mentioned, even even Max Meyer, too. I could definitely see a world where they get traded. Um, you know, obviously not all of them, maybe one or two of them here and there. Um, but I, I don't know. Like, I definitely think one of them is gone by the end, by the end of the offseason, by the start of opening day or spring training or opening day. Um, I just I don't know which one. What I find interesting is that there hasn't been a lot of talk about Trevor Rogers being a guy that teams have called on and had a lot of interest in. You know, you hear a couple of things here and there, but nothing, nothing with a lot of weight to it, or at least not with the consistency that you're hearing that Edward Cabrera or Jesus Lozardo, even Braxton Garrett, which I understand because Trevor, you know, was hurt for the majority of last year. He barely played. And then the year before that wasn't great. So, um, you know, I, I, I don't see Trevor going anywhere. I think it really does come down to either Eddie or Braxton Garrett being one of the two guys, or maybe even both that do end up getting shipped off for bats. Um, and I, you know, I would love to see Trevor Rogers. I, I know I said the same thing about Brian De La Cruz, but I would love to see Trevor Rogers take that next step, kind of return to his rookie season in 2021. You know, obviously we're not going to get that. I mean, that was almost Cy Young stuff there for a while. So, but, you know, closer to that range would be awesome. And a guy that, you know, if, so let's say they do trade Eddie or uh, Braxton, you know, one's a righty, one's a lefty. What I could see a guy them going after would be either like Michael Lorenzen or Alex Wood, two guys. So like if you trade Braxton Garrett, you might bring in Alex Wood, another lefty, or flip side, Eddie, righty, you bring in Michael Lorenzen to replace that righty in the rotation. Lorenzen's a, you know, more popular name, might cost a little bit more money, but Alex Wood is really a guy I could see them going after, you know, veteran guy. He's been there before. He's done a lot of innings in his career. Um, you know, you could slot him in at the five, just kind of anchor the rotation. Uh, I, and, you know, you'd be on the cheaper side of things too, at least in my opinion, at the way the, the 
uh, market is shaping out to be, I think he would be on that lower end of, of you know, salary wise. Yeah, Alex Wood has been mentioned before on uh, on the on this little series. Seems like a lot of people want him. Michael Lorenzen is another name we, we've seen him um, practice with Jazz. Uh, right, days exactly. Ago. So that might have that that uh, connection there. He pitched in the division, so maybe they want to. Who knows that Michael Lorenzen could be a very good option. Um, yep. Kevin also wanted to ask you. Uh, we mentioned all these pitchers. We didn't mention Yuri. And uh, hitters, we also didn't mention their eyes. And with both these yeah. guys, there's a lot of talks about um, extension talk between these two guys. I want to ask you, between those two players, who would you give an extension to? And is there a possibility that someone like Arise, if not extended, could be traded? So <clears throat> I know everyone got all worried about, you know, hearing what uh, Craig had to say over the spaces <laughs> last week. I know. I know that was the talk of the town for a little bit. Um I mean, obviously, in an ideal world, I would love to extend both of them. Uh, if you're, you know, telling me you got to pick one or the other, it's hard not to go Yuri. I mean, Yuri seems like a generational talent. He's so young. Um, it just seems like a guy that you cannot pass up on if you're given the opportunity to to, to extend him. So I would have to go Yuri. Uh, Arise, though, to answer your question about him, you know, possibly being traded if he's not extended. You know, maybe further down the road, uh, definitely not this year. You know, not going into the season, not at the deadline. You know, you're going to play the full 2024 season with him. And as a matter of fact, I'll go another step further. I say that unless you get a really interesting package for him, you play the 2025 season with him too, because that's the year that you get Sandy back. Yeah. You know, and maybe, maybe in 2025, you start looking at the deadline and seeing where the team's at and seeing, you know, where they are in terms of, of you know the the wild card race or the division race for that matter, and you you kind of reevaluate. You know if you're like okay, well we're kind of we're we, a lot of things would have to go our way for us to get back into this. Then maybe you could look at hey maybe a, a team who's contending wants a rise. Maybe you know something works out there. But I definitely don't think definitely not this year, not 2024. And I, I still I'm very confident in the fact that they would go into 2025 saying hey we got everyone back. You know assuming that no major injury happens this season to another guy. Um, so 2025, they go, Hey, we got all our guys back. You know, we've had a year now with this new front office with, you know, for the development and the different players and stuff, you know, maybe a couple of trades signings here and there. And it's like, let's see what we could do in 2025. We're putting all our chips in and then, you know, midway through the season, then we'll reassess and see where we need to go with things. Yeah. Just to see kind of like that option there, see if they go through the entire 2025. And, and I want to go back and ask you more, uh, this coming season, 24. But well, what's your overall outlook um, for this season coming up? And can they find themselves back in the playoff race? And, and maybe are they more of a 70, 75 win team than more so over 500? So I definitely think they could get back into the playoffs. I'm not going to sit here and say like, oh, 100%, you know, they'll be there again. Um, for the most part, it is the same team, you know, a couple – like, you know, so we've talked about Soler not being back, at least for now. Sandy obviously missing the year. Um, so I, I do think there is a world where they can make the playoffs. Uh, I will say I think they – and I loved it, but I think they got a little lucky last year with certain, some of those wins. I mean, the first one that comes to my mind is that comeback win against the Yankees. Obviously, that was awesome. But, I mean, how many times is that going to happen? Jordan Hicks, the game against the Cardinals throwing the ball in the right field. It just seemed like a lot of those things happened throughout the year. And of course, that happens to every team that makes the playoffs, but it's just a matter of is that going to happen in back-to-back -back years? Um, for the most part, though, I do think this team is going to be very similar to last year's team. So I don't think it's necessarily impossible for them to make the playoffs again. You know, I, obviously, it's going to take a couple big steps from younger pitchers. You know, Yuri's going to have to throw more innings. We need Max to come back healthy, Max Meyer come back healthy, and, you know, give us a couple competitive innings there. Um Lazardo has to keep the same pace, stay healthy. I mean, really the big word is health for a lot of these guys. You know, Jazz needs to play 130, 140 games. That'd be beautiful. And I think if those things happen, then, yeah, I, I definitely can see them being in the spot where it comes down to the last, that last week and, hey, you know, make me make a run at it. Um, but for now, I have them in the high 70s, maybe like, I mean, like high 70s, low 80s range of wins. That's kind of where I have them right now. Okay, all right. and then my last question for you, Kevin. I want to ask you on this Marlins team. What do you think the, the strength is of the team? You mentioned pitching, but again, a lot of guys are coming back from injury. 
could be offense, but there's no Solaire. Maybe defense, could it be the bullpen? But where does the strength lie for the for the Marlins? Well, for one, I'll say, and I just I, I kind of mentioned a second ago, health for all of them. Um, I think if they all stay healthy, that's the biggest strength. But if I'm picking one thing between the starting pitching, the offense, the defense, I'm actually going to go with the bullpen. The bullpen last year was really, really, really good. And, I mean, how many years have we been Marlins fans and watched Marlins seasons where the bullpen hasn't been great? You know, that they could have – and I, I know this goes for every team, but Marlins specifically, it felt like, they could have 15, 20 more wins if the bullpen just closed out one more inning. You know, got another out here or there. The bullpen was really, really good last year. And a name that a lot of people don't seem to be talking about, it seems like everyone has forgotten, is Anthony Bender should be coming back this year. Yep. So, you know, obviously we'll see what we get from Bender. But when Bender was healthy two years ago, he looked, like, really good. I mean, he was nearly untouchable at times. So you add him – into the mix with how good Tanner Scott was last year. Nardi obviously taking a big step last year. Obviously, we, we love to see that. Love to see it continue. And just a couple other names, you know, Browser Bond's nice. Uh, Shagwa filled a nice spot when he needed to. So I think the bullpen really comes down to that's going to be the difference for this Marlins team. The offense, you know, will be there. The pitching is obviously going to be great, and there's a lot of depth. But the bullpen, I think, is going to be the biggest strength of the team. Kevin? I want to thank you so much for for coming on the small pod to talk a little shop uh, about the fish. And you're welcome back anytime, man. I really appreciate it. No, thank you for having me. This is this was awesome. I loved every <laughs> second of it. I, I appreciate you having me on, man.